Hello, how you doing? I'm so glad to be here today because I wanted to make a video about all the symptoms that I have experienced after stopping my HIV medication. And there have been a lot. But recently, and this is probably the last residue or one of the, the I can't say this is the last one, but Never say never, so uh, I'm going to be cautious and say one of the last ones, uh, uh, symptoms uh, that I've experienced since I stopped HIV medication, and that has been the breathing, my lungs, uh, respir respiratory system. I've had a constant reminder of how my lungs begin to kind of... It just feels like, like I have to constantly remind myself that I am safe, that everything is alright. Uh, and now I have to let you know, I mean, I have to share with you something that I've discovered quite recently. And that is uh, the new, the German New Medicine. I don't know if you have heard of the German New Medicine, and I think I mentioned it on my previous uh, vlog, but if if uh, you didn't see the the previous one, I check on Google. I will put a link on the video below, in the description below. I will put a link on this German new medicine G N M, and it explains everything I have known instinctively for over, um, I don't know how many years, but finally there is a kind of scientific explanation of how symptoms develop out of a conflict, out of a shock conflict that created a disturbance within the mind, uh, psyche, mind and body, uh, connection and my I mean I've experienced before uh, three uh, different in different three different occasions I, I experienced pneumonia so I had in my psyche the fear of pneumonia and every time I stopped medication uh, which was one last year in 2019 and the other one in 2018 and I began taking the medication in 2016 but before that I was I mean I was diagnosed in 2006 so I had like a 10 years of not taking medication where at the end of those 10 years well, well not at the end of the 10 years because uh, at, in the middle of the crisis uh, was when I was getting the pneumonias, <clears throat> and it was it was difficult to be honest. It was very difficult, uh, but this last time, when I began taking the medication, I have to admit that it just felt like good. <laughs> it felt in my case. I love pills. I was. I have always in my life been the 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 kind of guy who likes little helpers when i was in my crisis time i like a little spliff i i even i mean i went for a time when i was doing all kinds of drugs and before that uh, uh, I like a little glass of wine or two or three or four or not a glass of wine but a bottle of tequila I mean, I have had in my time, uh, I have used the service of helpers or addictive personality, as somebody, as somebody people can can say it. Uh, I've had this desire to help me go through life or cope with my situations. So when I began taking medi the HIV medication in 2006, it was like a, 
this is good stuff and uh, so stop taking it as I have said many times before it has been a matter of principle because in reality I never experience um, secondary effects I've had I have a very high tolerance to toxicity I have to admit I mean probably that developed throughout my life being surrounded by toxic people, by toxic environments, uh, and then in my teenage uh, teenage years, I began well with uh, ingesting and smelling and and being. I mean, I mean, I just put everything I could in my body. <laughs> it was just like there was. I had no limits. I had no healthy boundaries, and uh, so I think that I build over time a high level of resistance of toxicity. So the HIV medication in truth never did anything, it never created any bad um, symptoms or reactions, all the opposite. It was all good. It was like taking steroids or antidepressants or I don't know, a line of coke. It was that good. It was like suddenly you can relax, sit back and just enjoy the ride. But stop taking it. Stop taking the medication and stopping my treatment has been a matter of principle. A matter of authenticity. Finding my real truth and empowerment. So it hasn't been easy because I have had to go against my disempowered victim, uh, weak, um, I don't know, my child, my, my wounded child uh, identity and personality. I had to go against the feeling bad and feeling sorry for myself and begin to empower myself and say, come on, you can do this. I know that it is easier to take a pill and it's a lot harder to wake up every fucking morning and do your meditations and yoga and take cold showers and have a good healthy meal and, and the, as much as possible maintain a healthy environment in all senses in the body in the mind in the spirit in what you eat in what you drink in what you hear as music in what you watch in kind of television in kind, what kind of relationships you surrounded yourself with i mean of course it's easier to take a fucking pill and i'm so sorry for cursing and using fucking 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 all the time but you know something it is so it's it's it makes me so fucking angry. Honestly, I've been so angry because it's like there is a part of me that said, just fucking take the pill for fuck's sake. Why do you have to put yourself through so much challenges and, and pressure and I, I don't know, so much. <clears throat> and, and, and the answer has always been is because I think I can. Uh, if I follow my beliefs, my previous past beliefs or the beliefs that I uh, embraced or learned in childhood and uh, then later in life, uh, I would not. I would not believe that I can do anything or achieve anything because I have always been uh, the black sheep of, 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 of my family and I never finished, I mean I finished high school, I didn't finish college. Uh, I have been going through life, tumbling from place to place, situation to situation and just pretty much recently in the last three years is that I found some sort of stability. Uh, and and it is just quite recent that I began to feel empowered 
when I first knew about the whole rethinking AIDS and the controversy theory or new theory about or, or parallel theory about HIV and the reason why I began uh, finding different ways of healing myself, my body, my mind, my, my emotions, it was because, because there was this sense of, of, of transcendence. I needed to, I tried to kill myself, I mean, this is the truth. I try to kill myself. This is not me thinking, oh, Eduardo, you can do this. No. Actually, I wa it was the opposite. Uh, I always thought I couldn't. I cannot do this. I cannot live this life. I'm way too depressed. I'm way too angry. I'm way too weak. I'm way too um, irresponsible. I'm way too uh, with zero discipline. I, I have no determination whatsoever, I have no education, I have no uh, uh, structure, solid structure, I have absolutely nothing. How the fuck am I going to make it through a HIV diagnosis? No, I, I couldn't. I tried to kill myself a year after I was diagnosed, but fortunately, or unfortunately for some, uh, I've been very bad at dying. I tried it many times. <laughs> I, just, I just don't die. <laughs> and uh, and HIV. That's when I also began to kind of question it, especially with the with the pneumonia and all these respiratory uh, issues that I've had. Uh, there was a time in 2012 when if HIV had been what we've been told it is, I'd be dead. I'd be fucking dead. I'd be cold dead. I mean, I'd be like, uh, and uh, and, I, and I'm not oh, uh, evidently. <laughs> that uh, that was eight years ago, and uh, and my immune system, according to doctors, have been really that really bad. Uh, like 4 to 11 CD4 count um, and I've had huge amount of doubt paranoia am I right am I wrong that's my cat playing so, so you hear a little bit of a bit of a mess <laughs> no one is my cat <laughs> uh, and uh, what I was saying I mean, I had, I suffered so much duality. Like my podcast, my podcast right now, the, the 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 fearless coward. I was in a way, I was fearless to to say I'm not going to take the medication. But in the other side of myself, there was this massive coward thinking, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Like uh, this thing, I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop that that and it has been a process of learning about myself of being able to look back into my past into my relationship with others into my relationship with myself and and be able to forgive a lot like a lot, especially those who have hurt me the most, including myself. But every single person who has abused me and used me and and, and controlled me and manipulate me, manipulated me, I mean, all those people, situations where in that moment gave me the support that I needed. Uh, but in the long run, sometimes I could have said, well, you could have done better for me or simply not fucking me around that much or I don't know. But you know something, things happened the way they happened and now I have learned to, to embrace the, the, the things as they are, things as, as, things as it is. 
just the reality as it is, and work around it. And I think this is uh, a very Buddhist kind of uh, attitude, which is just observe. I have done a lot of observation, a lot of questioning, and I, I have, I've had enough courage to, to question myself in every aspect, like the symptoms of not taking medication. Am I right? What does it feel so right? What part of it feels wrong? Why am I so, uh, why am I keep feeling this long situation? Why do I feel like my lungs are, are collapsing? Why do I feel like I'm not getting enough air? Why do I feel like I cannot live my life fully? Why do I feel like, like I want the help of the pills? Why do I feel like I want the easy way out? Why do I feel so much confusion and, and confrontation? Why do I have a fearless identity and a coward identity at the same level? It's like they're both as powerful of each other, I mean, the other one. And, and as I feel fearless, I feel so, so, so afraid. And it has been a matter of here, I think, comes faith, trust. One of the things that being able not to die, but being very close to death has given me has been my near-death experiences, which have uh, allowed me to become aware of a different reality beyond this reality. I have been aware of the love, of the feelings beyond this life I have been aware and I have been in touch with a higher loving totally en uh, embracing uh, love love uh, a feeling of 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 source like a father figure but it's, I mean father figures already putting uh, labels. It feels like where I come from is it's all pure love, and I am loved, and and I am I am as big as as the source where where I come from. It feels like beyond this mind or reality of mind, there is another identity of I am that is not afraid, that it belongs, that feels totally belonging to this universe, that feels totally deserved, uh, deserving of the best of the best, that feels totally free of, of limitation and, and a mass that drags me down, completely free and light, so that's what I've been aware of through the process of death or dying or near-death experiences. If you want to know more about my near-death experiences, I mean, I made videos online and, and you can just go to my, to my uh, channels and, and, and find it. If, if not, uh, just ask me to, to put a link if you, want to, if you don't find them and you want me to to want to see those. I made videos of my near experiences. And um, so it hasn't all been a loss. Uh, being very, very sick and being very, very close to death gave me the faith, the vision, the clarity and the peace to to let go of worry, of uh, duality, of, of fear, fear, and begin to make a transition from the coward 
into a more stronger, fearless identity. And so uh, transcend my own limitations. But as this video was about symptoms and as I was talking about how that affected me uh, directly into my capacity to breathe and how I discovered that, I mean, that I discovered <laughs> two hours ago, <laughs> I was watching a, a summit for the German New Medicine 2020. And I mean, wow, 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 wow. Because if you are not a, a yogi, if you don't meditate, if you don't, if you don't have the, the um, um, discipline, to, to sit down and observe your mind and emotions, guess what? <laughs> so there is, there is a group of people and scientists who have done that for you and they can explain how medicine uh, or the healing process develops in a very different way, all starting from conflicts, from shock conflicts, from between psyche, brain and body. I will also put that uh, on the description below. So as I discovered that this afternoon, this evening, I realized that I had a conflict of, I wanted to take the pills. There was a part of me, like I took, I take every single day, I take a scoop of um, pre-workout formula, which is a very, highly um like wanna say it's 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 all chemicals of different kinds to make your nervous system go like this so you kind of wake up it's my coffee and i've been taking it for the last seven years and i've been thinking it's time to let it go i don't need this because actually i don't feel it's making any it's it's, it's not it's not making me wake up more than i already um, or feel but there was a part of me that said no I don't want to let it go I want my I want my my powder I want my my pre-workout formula I want to go to the gym and and and, and lift and, and spend time and, and burn uh, calories and and lift weight uh, in the same way there was a part of me that said I want my pills I want my pills. I just want. I just want to, to feel like I have nothing to worry, and I want to feel like like I'm doing what I've been told, and I want to feel like the good boy, and I want to feel like people can trust me, and if they want to have sex with me, like they have nothing to fear, and I want to feel like like just part of this of of, of this uh, society. But then. I got to work today and it's the new regulation that we all have to wear a fucking mask people say oh it's a simple mask i mean come on it's nothing i mean just wear the fucking mask and i'm like a, really i'm surrounded by if i thought i was a, a, a coward I'm surrounded by, I don't know what animal is the most coward, probably humans, <laughs> of this planet. I mean, but it's just, it's just infuriating to be surrounded by so much fear. And, uh, and I'm like, I don't want to be part of them. I don't want to be one of them that goes back into <laughs> yes, protect me. You, 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 you do what you what you can to to make me feel good and safe and heal and 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 strong. No, I do that myself. And uh, and so today I learned my new mantra, and is I easily let go of toxic. Uh, substances and beliefs and this is probably every time I feel like I want my pills I'm just going to repeat myself to myself I easily let go of toxic substances and beliefs 
And I can feel it like, uh, yeah, that's what I needed. I, I, I can just let go of it. Because, you know something? And a lot more than a lot of people who consider themselves healthy. So I easily let go of toxic substances and beliefs. This is the new reality. And I'm gonna cut because this is 25 minutes and it's been way too long. I started I, I started if you do twice, actually three times. And the first two were like, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I feel so, I feel so, I was feeling, so, I, feel I was feeling fear. I was feeling that fear. I might just post them just to kind of, <laughs> to give you, to give you a, um, a, I mean, the two, the two sides of the coin. This is probably the strong side of the coin. This is once I kind of overcome the, the, the conflict. Like I found, I found resolution for the conflict. Whew. But two hours ago, probably I should post both of, both of them. Just to kind of give you the comparison. Anyway. Uh, besides uh, the lungs situation, no symptoms whatsoever. This time, before I used to have every single symptom. This time around, none of it. No, no itchiness. No, uh, nothing. Uh, I've. I mean, I used to have candidiasis, uh, which is um, um, what's the name of this? Uh, overgrown uh, this fungus what's the name of this well this thing that grows inside the, your your tummy and just makes everything white inside your mouth <laughs> nothing um, uh, no diarrhea good poo very good poo <laughs> uh, no herpes no shingles um what else everything thanks god thanks god and i say it with true devotion and gratitude thanks god and thanks to all the support that i have put around myself in terms of discipline in terms of determination in terms of job security in terms of family and friends in terms of healthy habits, in terms of good diet, <clears throat> in terms of, in terms of forgiveness, in terms of acceptance. I mean, in terms of absolutely everything that I've done in the last 14 years of my life since I've been diagnosed, uh, no. Well, let's say it's two, uh, 12 years since I, since I discovered rethinking AIDS and realized that that there was a, a possibility to heal myself, heal my life, heal my body beyond the toxic HIV medication. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being part of the journey. God bless you. If you are in a similar journey and want to connect, please send me a message. Um, if you want to, if you have questions, if you have, uh, just want to want to to send uh, send your thoughts. That's fine. Totally open to hear what you have to say. What this video has uh, uh, created, and uh, and and that's it. Until next time. 
Satnam. Namaste. Hasta la próxima. <risa>